Good morning, everybody. This is reading for years three and four, and week eight, and this lesson two today. Our lesson focus today we will be reading chapter eight of Fantastic Mr. Fox. We will have a Vipers Learning activity at the end of the lesson. This will include chapters seven and eight. So you may want to reread chapter seven again to refresh your memory. And today's learning objective is to develop inference and skills based on a text. And your success criteria, I can infer by asking questions. I can also answer these questions independently. I can even justify my answers using evidence from the text. And let's look at some of the vocabulary from the text that we will be reading today. And our first word is wafted. Have you heard of this before? What does it mean? Let's take a look. It is to move gently through the air. And a sentence example for you. The smell of the cake baking wafted up to the, my bedroom. And our next word. Supper. Have you heard of this word before? What does it mean? A supper is actually originally a secondary lighter evening meal. So you'd have your main evening meal and this would be later on in the evening. It'd be a lot lighter. And a sentence example. I always enjoyed our Sunday night suppers. And our final word for today, hatchets. Do you know what this means? So, hatches are small axes with a short handle for use in one hand. And a sentence example. The old worn hatchet has seen better days. We are now ready to read chapter 8. The foxes begin to starve. That evening, three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Boggis, one for Bunce and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr Fox's home and the three farmers sat outside their tents eating their supper. Boggis had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings. Bunce had six doughnuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste. And Bean had two gallons of cider. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Boggis picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? He shouted. Lovely, tender chicken. Why don't you come in, up and get it? The rich scent of chicken wafted down the tunnel to where the foxes were crouching. Oh, Dad, said one of the small foxes. Couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his hand? Don't you dare, said Mrs. Fox. That's just what they want you to do. But we're so hungry, they cried. How long will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother did not answer them, nor did their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell, Bunce and Bean switched on the powerful headlamps of the two tractors and shone them onto the hole. Now, said Bean, we'll take it in turn to keep watch. One watches while two sleep and so on all through the night. Bogger said, what if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on the other side? You didn't think of that one, did you? Of course I did, said Bean, pretending he had. Go on then, tell us the answer, said Bogus. Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on your farm, he asked. Thirty-five, Bogus said. 
I've got 36 buns said. And I've got 37 beans said. That makes 108 men altogether. We must order them to, to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be no escape then for Mr Fox. So the order went down to the farms. And that night, 108 men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox, or indeed for any other animal to escape from the hill. The next day, the watching and waiting went on. Boggus and Bunts and Bean sat upon small stalls, staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with the gun, their guns on their laps. Every so often, Mr Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. Then he would creep back again and say, they're still there. Are you quite sure, Mrs Fox would ask? Positive, said Mr Fox. I can smell that man being a mile away. He stinks. OK, we are now ready to start our Vipers activity today. And V for vocabulary. What phrase shows anger? Can you find a phrase that means promise? What does wafted mean? We did talk about this earlier. Can you think of some synonyms for it? I for infer. So what did the men stop for the day? And why does being smile a sickly smile? Why do the farmers put tents up? And why does Boggis hold a chicken near the hole? P for prediction. Predict if the farmers will be able to starve the foxes out. What do you think? E for explain. Explain how Dow makes it seem like the foxes have no hope in these chapters. R for retrieve. At what time did Bean switch off his engine? What is the farmer's new plan? Why didn't Mr. And Mrs. Fox answer the children about when they could eat? How many men are ordered to surround the hill? And how did Mr. Fox know they were still there? S for summarise. Can you summarise the farmer's current plan in less than 30 words? Today's plenary. Can you now write your own sentence examples for the following words? And these are the words that we looked at at the beginning of the lesson. Wafted. Supper. And hatchets. So it's now your turn to give your own sentence examples. Reflection. So you need to look back and reflect on how well you have done today. Did you manage to achieve the success criteria? Well done, everybody. You've done really, really well.